Hello there, my name is Victor Ogwinka. You're welcome again to Vanguard Live. This is the first edition of Correspondent File where we are going to be bringing journalists, seasoned journalists from all walks of life, reporting their beats and sharing their experiences on the job and how far they've gone. I promise you this is going to be an exciting time. But with me in the studio, my first guest on this show is a seasoned veteran crime reporter. She has been on the job for about 17 years and she's a multiple award winner. She just won one recently as the best crime um, um, reporter West Africa. No other person than Mrs. Evelyn Usman. You're welcome. Thank you for having me, Yinka. Yeah, you know, the, when, I, when I see crime and I see a woman on crime beat, it, um, <laughs> it, it sends, I don't know what to think about that. So how have you been coping on this job? Hmm. Well, how have I been coping? It's been so challenging, I must confess. Okay. But then, it depends on, I have passion for the beats, and that is what has been keeping me going. Okay, you, you have been covering crime for about 17 years. Yeah, 2002. That is a whole lifetime of a human. How has it been so far? Oof, that's a big question, thank you. Um, like I said, it's been challenging and... Um, interesting as well mm -hmm. because crime it has also helped me to be more security conscious no more of security tips mm -hmm. and um, know where to go whenever there is any issue be it the police with the army with the navy just name it mm -hmm. You, you know what they say? They say um, it takes a thief to catch a thief. It doesn't mean it takes a criminal to catch a criminal. Uh, <laughs> well, I don't know in what um, direction you're trying to drive that at. But then, well, it has helped me, like I said, to be more security conscious. Mm -hmm. When I see robbers, maybe petty thieves, mm -hmm. or when I see them trying to operate, mm -hmm. I know them from a glance. Because we've been used to having them talk to them, interview them, and we know most of their modus operandi. Of yeah. course, yes, I should know one or two of them. And most times they come with one device or the other new ones to explore. But then, before you know it, when they are caught, they also, uh, they also keep us on our toes. Okay, okay so you, you can smell a criminal from a distance, just <laughs> as you have, I guess. <laughs> When you say smell, yes, when I see them put up some of their tendencies, I'll say, yes, that's a criminal. Like when we were driving home yesterday, okay. I saw uh, along the Osho de Mile 2 Express, we were leaving the office. So I just saw three guys. From the way they acted, I knew. I just told the driver, I said, please wind up and ensure that the doors are Love. securely mm. securely locked mm. and which he did and to prove it the vehicle before us before we knew it they started attacking and all i did was to call one of the commanders just yesterday just yesterday ninth year and uh, they had their vehicle stationed at mile two bridge there and before you knew it, they picked two of them mm. we could identify them I identified two of them. I didn't allow them to know who was to give the information. All I did was to tell the commander, and the commander in turn gave brief to his men. And before you knew it, they caught. Okay, the okay. Gentleman. So you're saying you do this line of communication in um, about five minutes, and it was almost instant oh, response. Oh, sure. Oh, sure. Um, but it, I, it, the, the, yes, sure. It, it, uh, it, it happened just yesterday here. So the police can respond in that record time? Oh, no. Give it to our policemen. They are trying, I must say. They may not have reached where we really expect them to, but then they are trying. Okay, let us go to something very, very um, important. Um, you know, in Nigeria, along the um, security line and consciousness, th there has been a lot of death, you know, preventable death. I'm talking about accidental discharge. Okay. You know, this is something that will continue to dent the image of our police. I and beyond the police now, I'm talking about you know security, security operatives in general. Yeah. Whenever there's a gun, there's tendency of an, an accidental discharge. Oh, yes. This is not peculiar to Nigeria, of course. Yeah, okay. okay, but it seems to be an you know everyday occurrence in Nigeria. Just how, what is accidental discharge first? Mm, accidental discharge, okay, to bring uh, for the benefit of uh, the viewers. Yes. Yeah, um, a recent case happened, I think, last week along the Lagos um, Benin Express uh, okay. way, mm. where you had uh, a custom officer 
it was an accidental bullet and it killed somebody a young man in his 30s early oh, 30s unfortunately. so accidental bullets yes is when a bullet leaves the nozzle the muzzle okay. and it kills one accidental bullets accidental discharge is called as accidental discharge is when the safety catch is not properly applied by okay. that you say what do i mean i was going to ask <laughs> uh, yes because in a rifle mm -hmm. or gun in the layman's um, view mm -hmm. you have the magazine mm -hmm. where bullets are stored so when a gun is cocked the magazine leaves the, the bullet leaves the magazine mm -hmm. and goes to the chamber okay. so at that point any when the finger of an arm bearer just pulls the trigger you see a release mm -hmm. but most times why accidental discharge happen is some people some arm bearer not just the police because yeah. the, we, ju of we course. just had we've had cases yeah. with the customs yeah, the right, civil yeah, defense yeah. all uh, arm bearers okay so when a bullet leaves the chamber yeah. without necessarily being in use accidental discharge yeah, i can Focus. see you doing your hand like this <laughs> like that. have you, have you oh yes i've gun? had trainings i've had training kudos to yeah. the to the to the military mm, i must yes and yes the military has they've trained me about twice okay so so, so now talking about accidental discharge it is avoidable what is exactly the problem? Why should we have accidental discharge? Why can't I walk close to a, 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 a security operative with a gun, you know, and walk comfortably? Why should I be scared that I might drop dead? Okay, I think it is w an incident that ordinarily should be avoided, that is ordinarily avoidable. Mm. But then at times, most at times, it is caused by negligence on the part of the arm bearer. Okay. And it can also be caused because most times after using, after releasing the, the, the shots, the yeah, bullets, yeah. ordinarily it's supposed there's supposed to be what you call um, safety catch, where all the bullets return back to the magazine. But most yeah. times people uh, when they leave it at the chamber level, mm. you know when you cock a gun. The bullet leaves the magazine. Magazine is where the gun, yeah. the bullets yeah. are loaded. So it goes to the chamber, and anything, any a finger could carelessly trigger, just pull the trigger, and you just well, see it. Well, of course. Well, 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 yeah, I'm, I'm very, you know, worried about from the word carelessly. I'm talking okay. about a, a professional. Yeah. I'm supposed to be trained. Am I supposed to be careless? You know. Uh, there are so many factors that um, cause this. Number one, when you talk about training, an arm bearer ought to be trained and retrained. Mm -hmm. You ought to be told, I'm sorry, but I have to say this because I've been covering crime for long. The police don't train their personnel. Oh, you mean they don't retrain? Often, yes. Often on arm bearing, unlike the military. And when I talk about the military, specifically the army. They train. They, we have what we call musket training. That's okay. um, musket training is a um, training of um, personnel, be they uh, security personnel on arms bearing, because they need to be retained. Some of these policemen that left the training school, mm -hmm. they only had the opportunity to, to be trained in the training school, and some of them they will be deployed to maybe administrative and all that, not operational. For somebody that has been in an administrative unit for long, and all of a sudden the person is deployed to deployed. an operational yeah. Um, yeah. unit, tell me, that person needs to be trained on arms no, bearing no. because the knowledge the person acquired in okay. the training school. Mm, Besides, you know, yes, it, 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 the person must have forgotten and mm. that is one of the reasons why we have this accidental discharge, be it from the police or any other security operative. And another reason is this, some of the security operative, are, most times they are drunk. Mm. And there's this, some people will say it is a, there's this demon per se that comes with, you know, arm bearing. Is you know, you want to, you want to exert your authority. Like what happens, the case of uh, the custom um, man that killed that young man, mm -hmm. it was uncalled for. Okay, I, 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 you know, <laughs> I don't really don't want to talk about that case now. But 
let, let us look at um, the condition of some of these um, arms that we talk about. Yeah. You know, I see uh, an, an average security operator with a gun on the road, and then, of course, because of the metallic nature of this weapon, you see them and you feel like this this looks like um, it is outdated, it is obsolete. rusty, yes. it is obsolete. So, oh, yeah. it, it couldn't that be another problem? Yes, it is one of the problems. Mm -hmm. It is one of the problems. Mm -hmm obsolete um, weapons okay um, before we continue um, I, I, i've been speaking here with um, a, a multiple award-winning crime assistant um, editor um evelyn usman and um, of course we together we are running a correspondent file where we'll be talking about the the, the challenges and the intrinsics on the job on that beat thank you once again you can please bring your comments on and then um, of course if, if there are experiences to share you can share your experience and let's see what we can make of it now how do i stay safe from accidental discharge oh that's a very good one and before i come i answer that mm -hmm. i would like to also to differentiate between accidental discharge and stray bullets they are two different okay, things okay. so when you are talking of how do i stay safe mm -hmm. when uh, a bullet accidentally leaves the muzzle okay it hits somebody it must surely hit a target yeah. I target on suspect somebody will just be walking on, on the streets and before you know it the person will be knocked down by mm -hmm. a bullet mm -hmm. that is stray a bullet that strays from the gun okay. it's called straight bullet why okay. accidental discharge is when it's you know it could be act of carelessness on the part of the arm bearer oh, so how okay. do I say stay before I even go on how to stay safe we've had we've had incidents like um, there was one in first circuit that two years ago when we had this um, kidnappers on the prowl there so a woman was right in her sitting room mm. in her sitting room when robbers operated at seventh avenue to be precise so in the sporadic shooting there were uh, at least i forget you could also have tribulate can also occur when there is sporadic shooting yeah. by sporadic shooting i mean when one is just where you hear gun shots here and, and there it could be through shootout between the police uh, security so. agents and the, um the criminals, criminals. Yeah. Okay, okay and that was what happened at seventh yeah. avenue yeah. in this case this woman was right in her city room and some of them were just peeping through the window you know lagos lucas Mm -hmm. So some of them were peeping through the window to see what was, what was happening. And the woman's baby cried. She went in to pick her baby from her bedroom, came back to the city room only for the stray bullet. Oh. To hit her, hit the baby. Both died. Oh, We've also sad. had another case in um, Ikorodu mm -hmm. where there was a scuffle also and accidental discharge, like mm -hmm. the police put it, he hit a little boy that was being taken to the school, to a boarding school, and just killed that child. So how do I say, stay safe? Coming back to your question, whenever you hear sporadic shots, mm -hmm. it is better for you to stay safe by lying flat wherever you are. Okay. Lie flat, look for any object that is solid enough that could withstand anything, particularly bullets. The wall, for instance, is one of the safest and surest. But you lie flat. Some people say, oh, they want to see what is happening. Mm. And the person could be gone down. So the best way to stay safe is to lie flat. Mm. And then secondly, you put calls through to the relevant authorities. authorities. Yeah. We're talking about putting calls to the relevant authorities and numbers readily available for us to call and mm. then at, at the end, you know, also numbers for us to get. Um, I, I don't know if you have that, but maybe someday we're going to bring oh, a security yes, operative yes. here to come and speak on this one. But finally, finally, on this note, you know, um, crime and everything, a very, very sensitive part, you know, crime is to journalism and information to the public generally. Mm -hmm. Just say one, in, in one minute, just talk about the crime beat. Oh, crime beat is one of the most challenging beats of all bits mm -hmm. because it got to do with um it got to do with um, you you get your every day you are you encounter robbery suspects mm -hmm. i've had uh, an encounter with one of them i that when they were paraded he said he was thirsty i, I gave the ipo money to buy them water there was also a colleague of mine from i think new telegraph 
that one also bought for another person. Do you know what happened? She was walking down the road. I think Osho the also. And guess what? When one of those people we offered water identified her. As what? Identified her as somebody who was who came to his own rescue when he was thirsty. Okay. And it saved her because they wanted wow. to snatch her bag. Her bag. Wow. And he said, No, ma for me, but I won't lock Meaning don't touch that particular yeah. aunt you. Yeah. You know, it has also the beat has also it's also a human interest um, beat that has I have passion for the voiceless. Mm -hmm. And and by the grace of God on this beat, God has helped me to really reach out, to really give justice to the voiceless. I must mention one of them. In the case of a woman whose husband was a bus conductor, yeah. it happened last year. So this man at um, along Osho the Papa Expressway, precisely at um, Second Rainbow Bus Stop, yeah. last night vehicles, I think they were chasing one of the commercial buses. Yeah. And in the process, this man fell down from the bus he was and uh, the last man was crushed him and wow. because you know these government agencies nobody could talk they were the the, the man was from a poor home the father an ailing um, old man they could not talk. <laughs> Listen, but i have to cut you short okay. here because it looks like uh, we are getting emotional, emotional with this and you can continue talking about okay. this okay but it's unfortunate that we have to go right now okay. I, I must say very big thank you okay, to my you. quick my quick my quick um a message to Nigerians okay. stay safe whenever you see anything please say something don't say it is none of my business okay. call on the relevant authorities. Um, authorities okay I think that's very important thank you once again for thank coming to and, and that is all we can take for now on correspondent fire see you next time